I'm in Daejeon this weekend, and a few familiar faces have come together for a group exhibition. It's called Soup Kitchen, and it's all about film soup. What that means, I don't really know. Come find out with me. Amy Kim, the, the curator of the gallery, had contacted me about having a show here. Rosie had six people already lined up to do the souping. So I suggested like it'd be a good group exhibit. We got together a couple weeks ago and we developed 23 rolls of film in one six hour period at my house. I've got a film drying like cabinet, which I you may, yeah, may have some footage. We were able to develop it, get it finished and dried cabinet full of film and then we all we sent it up to a lab and got it scanned people had a week to put their choices together after that like a lot of artists i guess i spend too much time looking at instagram and i got a, some post suggestion about film soup swirls of colors were really attractive to me and I do pit-fired ceramics where you take bisque-fired pottery, put it in a fire with chemicals, and these chemicals burn flash color onto the pots. And similarly, you can't control the color effects, but you're kind of hoping for the best and getting some magic out of it. And I saw some connection between this pit-fired ceramics I'd done and this kind of fill soup started contacting everybody. Do you want to try this? Do you want to try this? Let's give this a go. And everybody shot two or three rolls. And in one day, we mass developed 23 rolled up to the whole. The result of that development day is what you see in this gallery. My favorite image in this whole thing. This is a photograph by Bettina and I hate this sculpture. It's just a massively tall ode to a rich man's sport in the most expensive part of town. The souping process turns something I despise into something I love, which I feel like is its own kind of magic. I Bill Pugsley shot these photos using some expired film mostly. Between the expired film and the soup, I don't really know what created what effects, but the images themselves, his editing on the images, and then the way that he decided to print and present them, I think really worked spectacularly. There's quite a variety of chemicals or other liquids that you're including in, in the soup. Absolutely. The soup can be any, like, hot water, boiling hotter the better, uh, acid like balsamic vinegar, lemon juice, uh, regular vinegar. Someone else used kimchi. Oh, wow. Um, salt is a really good ingredient. Pineapple was really destructive to my film, and I really liked the effect that that had. Just taking a little moment here to say that Rosie will be holding another souping sometime over the summer. So if you'd like to take part, you can reach out to her through her Instagram, which I will link below. Also, I've picked up a few prints from Bill Pugsley, which I'm going to give away to people in Korea who've watched this video. So if you'd like one of these three prints, leave a comment below saying, Soup me. After finishing up with the exhibition, Sune took me over to a great little Mexican spot for dinner, and we had another little chat about the scene and the community in Daejeon. One of the things that has really stood out to me about the Daejeon scene is compared to other communities that I know of, there seems to be a lot of collaboration and support between all of these exhibitions that are going on. And on top of that, it seems to be a really steady flow of exhibitions, both group and solo. Uh, I was wondering, could you speak a little bit about your own experience with that? The Daejeon Arts Collective plays a big role in that. People who arrive in Daejeon artists they can join it's not toxic at all everyone gets accepted it's very open and people get to connect then they have the opportunity to move on and do other things and a few people have actually done that the people from the DJAC always supports solo projects of artists who were involved and might still be a lot of the artists who have since gone on to do other things or join other groups a lot of them tend to support the DJAC shows 
So it is a very supportive community, I think. And I think that's definitely what stands out to me, that lack of toxicity yep. in the community. And I think every scene, every creative community does need that entry point. And I love that the DGIC is there for that. While we do have um, the presence of very healthy egos, I think for some reason, the community that you like that has been created here and we we do have some egos floating around but they're aware that especially being foreign artists in korea or foreigners in korea like there is that need for community I think that you you nailed it straight off the bat with healthy egos and really that is such a vital element you have some exhibitions coming up the most exciting thing coming up for me is the exhibition in Sweden that's happening in, at the end of June and July. Um, so that's exciting. It's really freaking cool. So it's going to be yourself, Heisuk, and, and Hyojong. We're going over there taking our art for a week and then just, yeah, it's going to be new for all of us. We have not been to Europe, so that's going to be interesting too. Fantastic. I hope it goes really, really well. Thank you. One of the things that I really love about the scene in Daejeon and Maybe part of why I keep coming here to interview artists is that people don't just share their work, but they celebrate their work through exhibitions, but solo exhibitions, group exhibitions, and they show up to support each other. And that collaborative spirit also helps people push beyond their boundaries and to try something new. So here's my challenge to you. Move away from chasing dopamine by only sharing your work online. Get out and celebrate it with real people and real exhibition. That collaboration helps to build a community and helps it grow in this local scene. And if you'd like to see an example of how we did that in Daegu a little while back, then you can try watching this video here.